What's up guys, Juice Messi here and welcome to a brand new video and welcome to a video today regarding Team of the Year and that is because today officially the 30 man shortlist for the Ballon d'Or was announced. Now there has been quite a lot of news regarding uh, the Ballon d'Or itself, there's been quite a lot of changes to it apparently, I think now it's announced by France Football. I'm not 100% sure how it works right now, but I'm pretty sure it is still linked to FIFA and will uh, kind of give a little bit of an indication to what players could get in the team of the year come January and also win the player of the year. But before we get started, as always, if you could show your support on the video by leaving a like rating, that'd be absolutely awesome. If you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button for day FIFA content and in the comments below, let me you think will win the Ballon d'Or. Right then, there are a few players that have missed out on the shortlist somehow, which to be honest should have been in there, but I will talk about them towards the end of the video. So player number one, this is alphabetical order by the way, is Manchester City's Sergio Aguero. When he's fit, he is the best striker in the Premier League in my opinion, and probably a lot of others as well. Um, the one thing about him, he does seem to carry an injury most of the time unfortunately, and that has kind of hindered him a little bit, although saying that, he has helped win them a lot of trophies, so it's not all that bad for Aguero and under Pep Guardiola he has looked very good but I think recently has been dropped every now and then but again that may be a slight fitness issue because he may not be 100% but Aguero for me he's probably deserving to be in the top 30 players in the world even when he's not fully fit then we go to player number two Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang who apparently in real life is linked to Manchester City to replace the previous man Aguero. I also want to point out that the player ratings and stats are currently the highest rated card on FIFA Ultimate Team so far. So Aubameyang, 86 rated, he won't get in Team of the Year because the front three, I'd say it's already decided. The same does apply to Sergio Aguero, despite how good they are, the front three of Messi, Suarez and uh, Ronaldo, I don't think it would beat him this year, but Aubameyang still up for nomination. Then we go on to Gareth Bale and one of the players that, again, he's so, so good, but I don't think will make the final cut. So don't get me wrong. I'm a massive fan of Gareth Bale. He has everything about him. And I personally think when Ronaldo is done um, at Madrid, I think Bale will step up and be the new main man. Uh, he has everything about him, can shoot, can dribble, very good in the air. Again, he's, just a, he's a monster of a player and fantastic to watch. Now we go to the next player, Gianluigi Buffon, who gets better with age. And despite being 38 years old, he's still winning title after title with Juventus at club level, as well as being the goalkeeper for the national team. Although, Italy do have uh, Gianluigi Donnarumma coming through now, who's like 17. And to be fair, I think Buffon still has a few more years left in him, then Donnarumma can step up and become the main man. Now we've got to the next player, Cristiano Ronaldo, who I think is everyone's favorite to win the Ballon d'Or for 2015, I oh, know 2016, sorry. That card right there is of course his inform card and usually is a left winger. So Ronaldo, I mean, I think he may win it just the fact he's won the Champions League as well as Euro 2016. Not only has he won something at club level, he also won something at international level, which most players, they can't really compete with. Although at the start of this new season, He's not really done too well so far. Next on the list is going to be Kevin De Bruyne of Manchester City. He probably should have been nominated last year to be in the FIFA World 11, but unfortunately somehow didn't make the cut. That's despite having a record-breaking season with Wolfsburg as well as making a big money move to Man City and uh, settling in very, very quickly. He's a great player, fantastic to watch. Then we go on to Palo Dybala. Um, I think one year ago joined Juve and now nominated for the Ballon d'Or. There isn't really too much to say about him. He's a fantastic talent, but the front three, like I keep mentioning, are kind of already locked down in my opinion. Then we go on to Diego Godin, a player that is usually overlooked to getting in to the World Eleven. In fact, I don't think he's ever been in it despite probably the last like three out of four years, he should have been in there ahead of Thiago Silva or potentially Sergio Ramos sometimes. But maybe this year he could get in there and uh, finally get his breakthrough. Then we go on to Antoine Griezmann, his Atletico Madrid teammate, and he's had a fantastic year himself, although the two big games he's had, the Champions League as well as uh, the Euro 2016 final with France, it didn't really go his way. He lost both finals, and they are both finals that Cristiano Ronaldo won uh, with his team and national team. Now we've gone to Gonzalo Higuain. He broke records with Napoli, made a massive money move to Juventus, and again, same as Dybala, I don't think he'll get in. He is a world-class player, a natural-born goal scorer. I just don't think he'll get into the top three, which is uh, very harsh on him for having such a great year, but Luis Suarez, he is next, next level. Then we got to Zlatan Ibrahimovic, uh, killed it at Paris Saint-Germain, then moved on a free to United. 
And things did start very well for Ibra at Manchester United. He was scoring goals for fun, uh, kind of showing what he could do, what he'd done every single week at Paris Saint-Germain. But recently, the last, like, say, five or six games or so, maybe even more, he's not done anything. Compared to his normal self, he's looked pretty average in front of goal. On top of that, he looked very, very lazy. I know he's getting on a little bit now. He's 34 years old. But I've noticed a lot of United fans on Twitter are kind of getting on his back a little bit. But still a world-class player and a player I really do enjoy watching went on form. Then we go on to Andres Iniesta. Unfortunately, in real life, has now picked up a very bad injury. I'd say he's definitely one of the best midfielders of our generation. He's won everything, uh, La Liga, Champions League, World Cup, Euros. He's won a lot, national and also club level. Just, I, I don't know whether we're getting to team leader this year. We'll have to wait and see. He usually makes it in though. Followed by another Spaniard, and that is going to be Coque from Atletico Madrid. It'll be a fantastic card if he got one, just I think it's very, very unlikely. And now we have got Tony Kroos of Real Madrid. I think he will get into the team of the year, by the way, as just a fantastic player, not just for Real Madrid, also for Germany. He's won the Champions League this year and a fantastic performer essentially every single week. Then we got on to Robert Lewandowski, one of the best strikers in the world, potentially the second best. He does score goals for fun. This season started off very, very well. And then recently, Bayern Munich have been struggling ever so slightly, uh, but I believe he got a goal the other day. So Lewandowski, fantastic player. Just don't think he'll make the final cut of the top three. Then we are going on to Thomas Muller and a player that I love at international level. He gives everything, obviously very, very close to becoming the top goal scorer at World Cups. Given the fact his age, I think he will overtake uh, Miroslav Klose. For Bayern last season, he scored a lot of goals. I think maybe scored his record tally. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, but he got a lot of goals for Bayern and a fantastic uh, worker with a great work ethic. Then we go on to Luka Modric, I think one of the two players that will be guaranteed to be in the midfield for team of the year. He is the maestro in the midfield. He goes forward very well. He defends very well. His range of passing is fantastic. On the ball, unbelievable. Just a great player to watch. He's won the Champions League. I'm pretty sure had a good Euros as well, scoring a couple of nice goals. Then we go on to Riyad Mahrez, the player of the year for the Premier League last season. And it's still strange to say, but Leicester City are the current holders of the Premier League title and they're not doing very well this year having Champions League on top of the Premier League and stuff uh, but I think Riyad Mahrez he does deserve the nomination just on the fact how good he was last season and during the summer he did have quite a lot of opportunities to go to one of Europe's elite one of the big clubs in Europe no disrespect to Leicester but I'm talking about the big boys the Paris and Germans and stuff I'm pretty sure we're all linked but Mahrez he signed a new deal and stayed at Leicester but I think at the end of this season he will probably go. The current Ballon d'Or holder, Lionel Messi, is up next. The player that I think is for sure going to get into the team of the year. Although I think most people are judging his year just off that one missed penalty. And when I was going through the list of uh, goals, assists, and stuff like that, the contribution for each player, I believe Messi had had the highest contribution mathematically of the lot. He won multiple titles with Barca and got to the final of the Copa America with Argentina. But unfortunately, again, he missed the penalty. Although the lead up to that final, he essentially carried them in some games. Next up is a goalkeeper of Tottenham. That is going to Hugo Lloris, who are actually getting to the final of Euro 2016 as well as finishing third, I believe it was, with Spurs. So he had a great year himself, a fantastic goalkeeper. Although I think he got in there ahead of David De Gea. One that will make West Ham fans very, very happy is Dimitri Pite again nominated for the Ballon d'Or. And that shows how good he was last year. Although he did get in there ahead of Meza Ozil. And I think a lot of people may disagree with that. But Dimitri Pite alone, um, I mean, during Euro 2016 was fantastic. Had an unreal year with West Ham. And I think a player that may move on from West Ham at the end of this season. The world's most expensive footballer of £89 million plus Paul Pogba is up next. He got into the team of the year last year with Juventus, and I don't think he'll make it into the final 11 this year. Um, he may do because of the price tag and stuff, but I'm pretty sure if he based it off performance, he didn't have a very good Euro 2016 and hasn't been very good at United either. From a FIFA Ultimate Team perspective, if he was to get a team of the year, it'd be fantastic in game, very, very good, and five-star skill moves, what more can you want? Also very, very, very expensive. Then we go on to uh, Manuel Neuer, the best goalkeeper in the world. 
I'm pretty sure he will get into team leader yet again and uh, fully deserved in my opinion. So not too much else to say about him because everyone knows how good he is. Now we've got on to Pepe, who won the Champions League as well as Euro 2016, just like Ronaldo. And 2016 was a fantastic year for Pepe. He was great for club and also country, very, very pivotal in both teams doing very, very well. I think he's in for a very big shout to get into Team of the Year. Barcelona's Neymar is up next, was one of the top three players of 2015, where I believe he came third just behind uh, Messi and Ronaldo, but a player in real life, still very, very young and scored so many goals. I think he's definitely a future Ballon d'Or winner when Messi and Ronaldo are starting to slow down a bit. When that is, who knows? But I think this year he may potentially miss out on the attacking spot. Now we got on to Rui Patricio. I'm pretty sure he's just in here uh, because he won Euro 2016 with Portugal. Now I'm not gonna lie, I don't watch Portuguese league football. I may have seen Sporting play every now and then in a European competition, uh, but other than that, Rui Patricio, I've not seen too much of him. Then we got on to Sergio Ramos, a player that every single year gets into Team of the Year. And most of the time it is fully deserved because not only has he essentially won everything possible at club level and also international level, I haven't really seen a centre-back score as many important goals as him. He seems to pop up with a goal every single final. Then we go on to Luis Suarez, I think, is the best striker in the world personally. I think he will be in the Team of the Year next to Messi and Ronaldo. He managed to outscore both those players in the league to win the Golden Boot, which hasn't been done for so, so many years. Is. I'm very confident he'll make it into top three this year. I think it's a bit of an underdog. I think personally he has a very good chance of winning it. And now we go on to the second to last player, a crazy one, Jamie Vardy. And the reason it's crazy is because like five years ago, he was playing non-league football. Now he is nominated for the Ballon d'Or. He won't win it, no chance at all, but it's not the principle, it's madness. So not only did he win the Premier League and also got second highest goal scorer, I think, just behind Harry Kane, he's now nominated for the Ballon d'Or prize. Also the first English player to be nominated since Wayne Rooney back in 2012. And I think it's pretty cool to see him in there. Some people say it's not deserved as Harry Kane did outscore him, but still it's a uh, quite a nice thing to see. Now the final player is going to be Arturo Vidal of Bayern Munich. He won the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich as well as winning the Copa America for a second year in a row with Chile. So he does have a big shout to make it in to the team of the year final 11. And that guys has been the 30 man shortlist. The players that have missed out, the notable ones in my opinion, I got Jerome Berteng, definitely should be in there. David De Gea, Meza Ozil, N'Golo Kante, Harry Kane who did outscore, Jamie Vardy and Bonucci. There are definitely some other players I've probably missed and they should have been in there, but that's the 30 man shortlist, the official one for the Ballon d'Or. And my top three prediction are going to be Ronaldo, Messi and also Luis Suarez. No particular order. I, I don't know who's gonna win it, but whoever does, I'm pretty sure they're fully deserving. So guys, that is going to be the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, show support by leaving a like rating. That'd be absolutely awesome. If you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button for day FIFA content. In the comments below, let me know who you think will win the Ballon d'Or. And also, if you missed yesterday's video, it'll be down below in that description box. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.